What's up everybody? It's Travis here from Travis.media. So I did a video a little while back where I presented what I thought was the fastest path into software engineering for someone with no coding experience. And that video has done really well. It's gotten lots of views, but it's also generated a lot of questions. Now, a lot of those questions I've answered in the comments and a lot of them I plan to answer in future videos. But one of the biggest questions I was asked from that video and actually over the years is how can someone with a full-time job learn to code on the side? How can they dedicate 20 plus hours a week learning to code on top of their full-time job along with having a family and friends and hobbies and other things? How can someone do that? How do you juggle all of these things? Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you five practical tips that will allow you to do this or enable you to do this successfully. And I think I have some good advice for you because I actually did this five years ago. I was working a job, a dead end job, wasn't programming, wasn't coding. And I learned to code on the side, putting in like 20 hours a week for six months and was able to transition into software engineering. And that's what I've been doing since. And I did this on top of having a full-time job and married with four kids, four little kids. I set up a little closet in the hallway. I put my headphones on every night and I just went to work. And it's hard. It's a lot of sacrifice, but I'm going to help you make that happen in this video. So I'm going to break this up into two parts. There's two prerequisites you need to put together. And then there's three other actionable items that I'm going to share with you. So let's get started. So number one, and the first thing you need to do before you start doing any coding is you need to set up a specific plan of action. You need to plan out your entire curriculum. So you need to sit down and be like, I want to become a web developer. I need to start with HTML and go find your course, write down what course you're going to take. Next, I want to learn CSS. Go find the course you want to take, write that down by CSS and create your whole schedule a very specific one. Like you want to learn Git, fit that in there. And by the way, if you're like, I don't even know what to learn. Well, I'll put a link below to a video. If you want to go the web developer route where I explain step-by-step -step what you need to learn in those six months, but you do, you need to create this list, make it a checklist. Okay. I've learned HTML. Took me a week. Check that off. I've learned CSS. Took me three weeks. Check that off. Now I need to create a project. Check that off. Now I need to learn JavaScript and keep going accordingly. In addition to this, and this may sound small, but it's very, very important. You need to set a start date. You can't just be like, oh, let me pull up something here. Let me go to YouTube. Here's some HTML. I'm just gonna start learning today. Don't do that. Set a start date, set a plan, set a start date like next Monday or the Monday after next, get your plan together and plan to start on that day. So this is number one, before you do any coding or anything, make a very specific plan of action from start to finish. Also pick a start date. Prerequisite number two is to get the right mindset. Now this is so, so important. You're thinking 20 hours a week for six months. Oh my goodness. What a sacrifice. But you have to remember it's only for a season. You can do anything for a season. I always like to say, if you start learning to code at 40 in six months, you'll still be 40. It's a big sacrifice. Yeah, but it produces big results, a career change. So you start learning at 40, six months later, you're still 40. If you spent those six months just clicking around on YouTube, learning a little bit of this, a little bit of that, then you've wasted six months. So if you have that specific plan and you keep that in mind, Hey, this is just for six months. It's just a season. Then I think you'll be more successful. Another thing you must add to this mindset is that you need to stick to this specific plan. People are going to come out of nowhere telling you about all these new technologies you should be learning in this language that'll in the future, get you in the door easier and, and all of these shiny lights that you should be doing instead of this boring path that you put together. Don't get sidetracked. Don't go learning something that's not on your plan. You can learn after the six months, but during the six months, you just got to stick with this. And then when you land the job, you can explore all these other things people are talking about. And finally, with this mindset, Keep the end in mind. So the goal is to change careers. So you're doing all of this learning so you can get to the point where a company says, Hey, sure, come on in and we'll test you. We'll interview you. And if we think you're skilled, we'll give you the job. That's your ultimate goal. You want to prepare, you want to learn so that when you get to that interview, you know what you're doing and you pass the exam and you win the job. So when you get two to three months in and you're like, what am I doing? I'm spending all this time. Think about the end. What's the goal? The goal is a career change. So that's number two. And that's the mindset you should keep the whole journey. 
All right, so those are the prerequisites. Here are the three actionable steps that I think are crucial. Number three is discuss it with your family. Now, I wouldn't be where I'm at today without doing that step because what happens is once you, you start to put in your 20 hours a week, your spouse or your kids are going to start feeling a little bit neglected because you're so busy in this stuff. You're busy in your work and they're going to get mad and then you're going to get mad and then you're going to get flustered. You're going to end up quitting and your six months is out the door. So beforehand, you have to sit down with your spouse and your kids and you have to say, look, I'm going to be spending extra hours every week for six months. This is so that I can bring home a bigger salary and I can be more fulfilled at work and we can move into that bigger house or whatever your motivations are. Get your family on board. Let them know, hey, in this free time, I'm going to be learning to code. I'm not just doing it for fun. I'm doing it with the end goal in mind of changing careers. It's going to benefit the whole family. So I'm not neglecting you guys. I'm just going to do a six month sacrifice here where I'm going to buckle up, learn to code and change careers. So for me, it was tough. You know, that means my wife had more on her plate. My kids didn't see dad as much, but they knew why. They knew, hey, dad's making the sacrifice so that he can bring home more money and feel more fulfilled in his career and do the things he or she really loves. If you like coding, which of course you do, or you wouldn't be doing this, but be sure you relay the outcomes, the benefits, the friction that it may bring with your family beforehand so that they're on board and on your team as you pursue this journey. And if you're just single, like 21, 22 with a dog, then you should be able to free up time anyway. But you may wanna let your friends know, hey, six months, I'm gonna be a little out of pocket, but we're gonna to get to that in a minute. So number three, discuss it with your family, make sure they're on your team and they're on board with this plan. All right, number four is that you're gonna to have to sacrifice pleasures. So you're gonna to have to give up hobbies and things that you like to do during the weeks. And you can do this because remember, it's just a season. There is an end to it. Once you land the job, then all your extra time is freed up and you can go do stuff and resume your normal activity. But you're gonna to have to sacrifice pleasures for six months. So like I just said, make sure you share it with your friends. Hey, I'm not ditching you guys. I'm just taking a break for six months. I'm just buckling down for six months so that I can do this thing. And by sacrificing these pleasures, it'll free up more time for you to learn and more time for you to put into coding. And number five, this is really important. Make sure you set aside specific times for learning. So here's what I did. I put in an hour after work every day. So I got off work at five and I didn't say, hey, it's five o'clock. I'm going to start coding now and then check my phone. And then all of a sudden it's 530. I went from five ending work to five minutes in like five seconds on my other computer. Like didn't waste any time. I got to redeem this hour. I have this hour set aside. I need to cut the distraction, make it a meaningful hour. And then after dinner, when the kids went to bed, I would stay up till like 11 o'clock midnight doing meaningful work, meaning my phone was somewhere else. And I had a plan with my, remember that specific plan at the beginning? I had my plan of action of what I needed to do. And by the way, speaking of that specific plan, you can make it really specific. Like you can be like, Monday, I'm gonna do lessons one through three. Tuesday, I'm gonna do lessons four through six. And so when that time comes, you know exactly what you need to do. So hey, maybe you need to get up early. Maybe you need to get up at five o'clock, six o'clock in the morning, put in an hour or two, put in an hour right after work, and then put in three hours after the kids go to bed. That's five hours a day, five days a week, that's 25 hours a week. Cut out an hour, it's still 20 hours a week. It's totally doable, but you gotta be specific on when those time blocks are. So just to recap, one, you need a very specific plan of action. You need to know your entire course of study from beginning to end. Be sure you include projects and algorithm learning so that you can pass that coding interview and things like that. Number two, get the right mindset. Remember, it's just a season. It's only six months and it's six months of specific work. Stay on the path. Don't get sidetracked. Make sure you reach the end. Number three, discuss it over with your family, your wife, your husband, your kids, your friends, and make sure they're on board to cheer you on. Make sure they understand the intended outcome and how it benefits them. Fourth, sacrifice the pleasures. Just give up the pleasures for six months. Seventh month, you can resume it or resume them. Number five, be sure to set aside specific times each day to work and make sure it's meaningful work without distractions. And if you follow those five steps, I think you'll be successful in finding time to learn to code those six months. 
So I hope this was helpful. If you found it helpful, click that thumbs up button and leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. I'll see you in the next video.